But so you explicitly want to get into entertainment? Well, it's weird. You know, I made up the name Tay Zonde. My right. government name's Adam Bonner. And I, I, as well, being an Adam, <laughs> I would just like to say, great name. <laughs> uh, so uh, I started to think, hey, you know, maybe I want to do this. YouTube was coming along in 2006. Mm. And what it was is I was singing at open mics in Minneapolis. I'd take my keyboard. I'd always done music as a hobby since I was a kid. Mm. Never seriously, but I always had a keyboard to play around. My mom was a pianist and an opera singer and whatnot. So it was always kind of like in the environment. Um, so I'd done it as a hobby. And I got sick of dragging my keyboard and amp and other equipment out to open mics in the winter in Minneapolis. And I remember one specific time that I brought like a 40 pound amp and a 30 pound keyboard and had it like with an alligator cable and one of those airport things that you wheel it. And I wheeled it into this mom and pop cafe and it took me 10 minutes to set up. I sang two songs and like there were three people there. Two of them were reading the newspaper and the other one was Minnesotan. Minnesotans are very nice. They're like, yeah, that was great. Uh, Keep doing that. And I was like, uh, there has to be a better way to get my music out there. So YouTube came along, and I'm like looking, hey, um, who was big on YouTube in 2006? I think Ryan Leslie was mm. the most subscribed YouTube musician. But I was like, hey, people are just making videos in their living room. Uh, why don't I try to set that up? And then came the question of, well, if I do that, at this point in my life, I think I'm still going to be a university professor right. uh, under my name, Adam Bonner. Uh, why don't I create this other character, this other name, uh, to, to do it under? And hopefully it'll just kind of be a secret thing on the down low and what happens with it happens. Uh, that didn't end up happening. I created Tazon Day in January of 2007. And uh, yeah, it didn't blow up originally, initially. Um, it was your third upload, right? Chocolate Rain was probably about my 12th upload. Oh, okay. And even then, because it was, a, I started the channel in January. It was April 2007 that I uploaded Chocolate Rain. Even then, it didn't go super viral. I finished Chocolate Rain as an afterthought. It was never supposed to be the finished version. I had another video that I'd uh, done in a collab with an Australian dude called Love. I think it's still on my YouTube channel. Uh -huh. But they uh, announced they were going to feature on the front page of YouTube. And when... You got that announcement in 2007. It was like winning the lottery. You got an because, email telling you they were going to feature yes. it? Yes. Well, asking, hey, do you mind if we feature this on the front page? And I was like, uh, hey, that would be great. That's so crazy. Yeah. Uh, I guess maybe what was it that you like were selected in some way? Or if things were different then, because nowadays the algorithm will just shine oh, yeah, upon now, you. And you they have don't no have idea. any human curation on YouTube uh, anymore. But at the time, all the different sections on YouTube actually had an editor who handpicked videos right. to be in them. So you well, have the this... trending page is like that still, right? Because yeah. the trending page is all kinds of human manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so I think, uh, you know, I, I saw that that was going to be featured at a certain time. Like, okay, I have this other song, Chocolate Rain, that I've been working on. You know, I've had the loop in my head for maybe five or six years. I spent six weeks writing lyrics to it. I had it all like the pieces together. That's like, a process. Why don't I just rush this finished over a weekend and... I did it. I just put out, I got out of the studio and looped it. And it's a very simple song. Mm. Uh, I didn't really know how to use the software that I was using to do it. And I put it up as an afterthought so that I could double dip, knowing that people would see the other video, then they could go to my page uh, on YouTube and, and see you know, this other new video, Chocolate mm. Rain. Um, it didn't really blow up until someone posted it on dig.com, which uh, for those of you kids, it's kind of like what Reddit is now. All right, it's a social. Dig. Yeah, it's a social bookmarking site that was big uh, before Reddit. Yeah. And uh, it was on the front page of Dig for a couple weeks uh, because that's how Dig works. Someone saw it there, posted it on 4chan, which I had heard nothing about. Right. I, I like, knew nothing about 4chan, B-tards, uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, but it became sort of a joke on 4chan. And the first sense I had that Chocolate Rain was blowing up at all or becoming like bigger than, than usual was... 4chan conspired to prank call Tom Green during his show uh, that he was doing in his, his living room. And halfway through, the caller just busts out singing, Chocolate Rain! And then Tom Green is like, Chocolate Rain! And I, I saw the video of this. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, the dude who did Freddy Got Fingered just sang my song. Like, he's kind of a celebrity. I don't really know him, but, like, right. that's a known person. And then after that, you know, the, the views just started piling up, and it was featured on Carson Daly was doing a traditional uh, format on NBC at that time, and he featured on his show. And I remember the very first radio interview 
I ever did about Chocolate Rain. And please don't. These are all on YouTube, and I'm terrible in them. Uh, but uh, it was on Playboy Radio. No, no, no. It was Opie and Anthony. Uh, Playboy was after. It was Opie and Anthony. And I followed a conversation about how much of the ocean was made up of whale semen. <laughs> and so, and you know, you like, you do the radio interview and you're like, in your ear, you hear what's happening before you in the show. And so it's like, well, it seems like 40% of the ocean might be made up of whale junk. Oh, and we have this dude who's blowing up in this viral video. We have the actual chocolate rain dude. Unrelated like, to whale <laughs> semen. <laughs> uh, and like, I had no sense of being a public face or what to do in interviews. Right. Like all of my early interviews are super, super awkward. Cause I was just literally this nerd plucked out of my living room, uh, put on a national stage. You're just toiling away, trying to scrounge up some little bit of fame at this yeah. point. And then all of a sudden, because of the internet, you're just absolutely bombarded with it so Absol fast and then, in a way that never could have happened before. Yeah. And there were no breadcrumbs to follow. Like I couldn't see, had this happened to Rebecca right. Black, had this happened to Antoine Dodson, there was no one I could see, what did they do? Mm. So I kind of had to take that inundation of being quote unquote hot. Three of the four major labels at the time uh, were interested in signing me. Everyone wanted, to, wanted me to perform at their you know, kid's birthday party, their kid's bar mitzvah. Their... And this is way before William Hung too as well. Yeah. This was actually, no, I think this was around. Okay. Um, I think William Hung was either happening or had already happened to some extent at that time because uh, I mean, people and not necessarily kindly were yeah. comparing me to William Hong when, <laughs> when it blew up. Like, ah, hey, it's the next William Hong. This is the, this is the uh, world of the internet now. Just no talent. Did and, you have the instinct to just be like, I need, because now anyone who gets in that position, my advice to them, and maybe you can tell me if you agree, my advice would be take this moment. Be willing to be on tour, on call, do everything you can possibly do, get every dollar that you can because this is your moment to create a platform, to get people to pay attention. You just seize everything right now because this isn't going to last for that long and you need to make what you can out of it. That is what my advice would yeah. be. Now, was that your attitude at the no, time? No, I was stupid and I lost millions of dollars because I was stupid. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that was very stupid is... I had Chocolate Rain as a free MP3 download in the video. Okay, that was stupid in retrospect? And no, 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 no. That wasn't stupid. What was stupid is that because I had the free MP3 download, I was like, why bother putting it on iTunes? Why bother, why bother mm. putting it you know, for, for sale for download? Uh, meanwhile, people who had viral videos that were very viral, but maybe a little bit less, like uh, Liam Cal Sullivan, shoe, uh, his shoes song, made $1.3 million in iTunes in the first year it was out because tied to an album and it went viral mm. and you know he had been doing music for 10 years so he had made a smarter choice in that regard um but i think i i was also very like i created the youtube channel and created Tazon day basically to find who i was mm. uh and when all of that heat hit i was still very early in that journey mm. of figuring out what i wanted to do and who i was and like youtube was an experimental thing for me and I think rather than seizing it from as a business, like you look at someone who seized it like a business, a brilliant uh, uh, businesswoman, Miranda Sings, mm. uh, aka Colleen ba Ballinger, who you know she was a tra she graduated as a trained cooler to a soprano, fantastic real life, technically trained singer. She's like, man, there are thousands of talented girls. Um, I'm going to make this character who is over the top and gaudy and designed to be viral sensations. It was and calculated. It was calculated. Yours was not calculated. Mine was not calculated. <laughs> Mine was just kind of being me and then accidentally became successful. And right. then I spent years being conflicted about who I wanted to be. Because there was part of me that wanted to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. There was part of me that wanted to prove that, hey, you know, I can sing well. I can, you know, sing Frank Sinatra or sing, you know, like Josh Groban or uh, Mike Bublé. Um, and, you know, I can't sing like Mike. I can't perform like them. But I think part of my ego was like, okay, this Tazon Day thing is being popular in this way. But uh, that way is kind of making me feel a little bit safe and uncomfortable. And it's a meme and it's sort of out of control and it's not really established. I want to move my popularity to become more comfortable, uh, uh, more popular in a way that I'm comfortable with, mm. which is more traditional. And I spent years kind of in that conflict in my YouTube channel where you'll see some of the covers I was posting at the time. And it's like, and it's not that I'm bad at, you know, singing Disney covers or Frank Sinatra or whatever, but it's not what I initially became popular for. Mm. And I think 12 years on, 
now I see, they say hindsight is 2020. I can see, man, you know what I needed to do right then is lean into the meme, just yes and it, and be like, hey, chocolate rain, yes, I, I sing with a deep voice and I'm happy and, <laughs> you know, just like the trollolo guy, chocolate rain, trollolo, la 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 la, and just like milk that. Mm. Uh, because ultimately, people, the most magnetic part of my business was just people seeing me be happy as right. I sang. As, and, you know, that kind of connected to them. And then they wanted to be happy. And that, that's really all it was about. And you're like a, a family-friendly, corporate-friendly yeah. face, voice. Everybody wants to support a young person of color these days. Yeah. That's like a big part of it. Nowadays, it would be such a more established pipeline for you you'd be like going to the google office and doing a little talk i, I and like, did actually you know, i did actually right. go to the google office. okay I, there you I, go uh, they invited me to their zeitgeist conference in 2007 which is their like uh super i don't think, think they have it every year right i don't know if i'm still under nda 12 years later but yeah it was fun <laughs> it, it was like the freakiest moment that happened there is i was in a coffee room uh like be backstage because they were doing a little corporate meeting at at, at google's headquarters right. and al gore walks in the room and he's like, is this where the coffee is? And I'm just like at my laptop. I'm like, shit. Did he come in alone or did he, he come alone. in with a little mob? No, no, no? He, was, he was alone. He's totally by himself. And he's like, hey, is this where the coffee machine is? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I, I was just totally just like yeah. freaked out. But, and then, you know, I mean, you're around those crowds of CEOs. Like, I mean, I, I'm 5'8", but like CEOs tend to be tall. They're like mm. six foot one, six foot two. So it's like, I was like, okay, I'm the YouTube talent. I'm <laughs> the, happening on this new YouTube platform thing. But man, Google knows how to party. Google spends mm. money on parties. Like when they party, they... <laughs> it's almost I like mean, they've got a lot of money to spend from <laughs> uh, stealing and monetizing all of our identity and personal information <laughs> for the past 10 years. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is for a while they thought Facebook was beating them at that. Mm -hmm. And that's why they had that whole Google Plus debacle is it, around 2011, 2012, they're like, oh, gosh, Facebook is collecting more social data mm. about people and their relationships and how they talk to each other. Uh, so we need to come up with our own social network, which is what the, uh, the concept of Google Plus was mm. ultimately to be a machine to generate social data for Google and allow them to compete with Facebook. Um, as that fell on its face and they had the forced YouTube integration, all sorts of things, I think Google realized that they could spy on us other ways through our yeah. Gmail. We don't got to tell they, them. Yeah, through our Gmail, through our advertising cookies. And right now, YouTube is a platform uh, looks at more than a thousand different pieces of data to try and predict what videos you are most likely to watch and keep watching on the platform. So right. they know where you're located. They see the advertising cookies uh, that, from other sites that you visited, uh, how fast you scroll down the page, all of these factors to try and figure out how will we make this as addictive as crack to this particular individual. Mm. And, you know,